Hey everyone, in this chapter we are expanding on what we talked about previously with databases and we're actually focusing more on just creating queries. Um, so we're actually going to learn a little bit more about uh, SQL and how to create uh, queries in SQL that allow us to have a really, really uh, tight control over what data we are getting from a database and displaying to our users. So. Some really cool stuff here, but this video is going to specifically focus on the uh, SQL select statement, which is actually used to build queries. Um, we'll be covering 12.1 uh, from the focus part of the textbook for this. Last chapter, we talked about how queries uh, allow you to retrieve specific information from a database. So you can specify certain fields that you want to get from a database, whether you want to exclude certain fields or like what we saw um, in the last chapter, include a field from another uh, table in a database using a specific relation, right? So that's totally possible. Uh, you can also filter out specific records, which is what we're going to talk more about uh, in this chapter. So the select statement that I'm going to talk about is uh, actually a SQL statement, not a visual basic statement. Um, SELECT is in all caps because that is usually how people tend to write it in SQL. You don't actually have to write it in all caps, but the SELECT actually helps identify it as a SQL keyword. So I'm going to use um, all caps for all of the SQL keywords. But uh, the yeah, the SELECT statement uh, helps select information from a database. So what happens is um, your table adapter actually runs the SQL statement, passes it to the uh, SQL server program that is controlling the database, and then based on what you include in that select statement, um, the uh, server is actually going to return information from that database to your program. Uh, so. The uh, select statement um, defines a query, essentially. It says what fields you want and what records you want based on certain clauses of the select statement. And it can even um, specify an ordering in which the uh, the actual data is returned. I, I just noticed this says can order fields. It should say that you can order the rows or the records that are returned back. So normally records are returned back uh, in an ordering based on the primary key, but you can actually specify a different ordering if you so choose, and we'll get into all that. All right, so here's the uh, syntax for a select statement in uh, SQL, and we'll kind of break uh, down all of this um, one at a time, but the bare minimum that you need is uh, the first part, select field list from table. The field list is a comma separated list of names of fields that you actually want to include in your selection. And then uh, after from right here, you just put the name of your table in your data set. Uh, and that just, if you just do this select field list from table part right here, that just includes all of the records from the table. Uh, but only the fields that you specify from those records uh, in this particular table right here. Down here we have the WHERE clause, which uh, specifies what records you actually get out of it, and the ORDER BY clause, which specifies how you order everything, but I'll come back to the WHERE clause and the ORDER BY clause in a little bit. I just want to focus on the bare minimum SELECT uh, statement right here where you don't include these optional clauses. So let's just think about the select clause right here. Now right here, this is the um, oscars.mdf database that the textbook uses for the focus part of this chapter. I'm not going to show you the actual contents of the database right here. Instead, I'm just going to show you the definition of all of the fields. So all of these fields right here, year, uh, actor, actress, picture, animated, these all refer to um, different Oscar ceremonies throughout the different years, uh, the year being the uh, primary key for this table right here. So 
for the year 2012, for example, who won Best Actor, who won Best Actress, uh, what movie won Best Picture, and what movie won Best Animated Picture. The data types being um, integer and essentially string. Um, all of these other fields are of data type varchar 50, which means uh, variable length strings or variable length character arrays of up to 50 characters in length. But we're not going to worry so much about the actual contents of the database right here. Um, you're welcome to cross-reference the textbook if you want to see the actual contents of this or look at the um, database itself inside of your own uh, data files folder that you downloaded for this class because you do have access to that database. But um, right now I'm just looking at what the table actually looks like, you know, the name of the fields in particular and the type of data that they hold in order to really get, uh, you know, work with these select statement examples that I'm about to show you. So for example, if we wanted to get the entirety of the table, we could specify all of the fields in the field list. So I say select year, actor, actress, picture, animated from winners. And that will get all of the fields from the winners table in this precise order, uh, year, actor, actress, picture, animated. Um, and it will just return all of those records because you haven't said to exclude or you know specify which ones you wanted to include um, is probably more accurate. So something like this will just give you the whole table. And this is the kind of uh, SQL select statement that we would have actually seen, maybe briefly caught a glimpse of in the query builder in the previous uh, chapter. But yeah, this is just the bog standard select statement. It gives you all of these fields from this particular table. And since uh, we have included all of the fields from the table, then that just gives us the entire table. Now, if I only cared about um, every year's best actor and best actress winners, and I didn't care about the best picture or best animated picture, well, what I could do is select just the year, actor, and actress fields from the winner's table, and that would give me all of the best actor and best actress awards of every single year that is included in the table, every year that is represented by a record in the winner's table. So you can exclude certain fields, and that just removes those fields entirely from your query, but this still gives me every single record just the fields, you know, these three fields, but every uh, value in those fields for every record, if that makes sense. I've kind of just effectively removed two of the columns from consideration without actually removing the two columns from our data set. I'm just asking the data set to show me only these three columns from the data set. Or not the data set to show us, but the, um, you know, the, so some of the actual, like, table controls to show us those three fields from the data set of five fields. So the all the stuff that's working in the background, we're just requesting that it shows us um, this intermediary, like three. Or not intermediary three, but like we're asking the intermediary controls to show us these three um, fields right here. So now let's talk about that where clause. It is a completely optional clause. Um, and a select statement, but you would write where after you've already, uh, you know, written down the fields that you're selecting and the table that you're selecting from. So where comes after that, uh, and you specify a particular condition to um, specify what fee what uh, rows are actually going to be included. And this condition is going to use operators and values from fields in order to define, like, you know what rows, what records you're going to retrieve. So essentially you build up this condition using operators and fields, and then you retrieve the records that satisfy the condition for which the condition is true. And these are the SQL uh, operators. The operators we'll be using in the where clause. That's what this left column is right here. All of these operators that we will be using in where. 
I have a description of each operator and then an equivalent visual basic operator, or at least something that looks very similar. And most of these are going to be pretty equivalent between SQL and Visual Basic right here. Um, all of the equality operators are the same, and, or, and not are the same, except for the fact that in SQL we tend to uppercase them, you know, put them in all caps, whereas in Visual Basic we only capitalize the first letter of those uh, Boolean operators, those um, logical operators there. Where we started having some differences is in like and is null right here. So like as an operator is very similar to like as the visual basic operator that we talked about in chapter seven, where they both um, try to match text against a pattern rather than doing a full string equivalency. So there's wildcards involved, all that kind of stuff. But the SQL wildcards are a little bit different from the Visual Basic wildcards, and I'll show that off in just a little bit. Uh, but it's not, you can't do a Visual Basic uh, pattern string and then port that over one to one to SQL. The pattern strings in SQL are a little bit different than the pattern strings in Visual Basic. And now for SQL, there's this is null operator right here which is true if a value in the current records field is null or if it's empty. Remember in chapter 11 when we had those um, courses tables that were allowed to have empty grades if the student hadn't finished taking the class yet. Uh, so that's what is null is actually testing for is if there's a field that is allowed to be null and if that field has a null value at the particular uh, record that you're checking. So is null in and of itself is an operator. Um, it is true if the value is empty and it is false if the value is not empty. And this will be similar to in Visual Basic how um, we saw this in chapter 11 when we were actually doing calculations with that course grade table. Um, we had this for loop and we were iterating over every record in the actual table and um, checking if the grade field was null. So it was row dot is grade null. Um, if we were doing year, it would be is year null. If we were doing actress, it would be is actress null, anything like that. But in that example, it was is grade null. And if that was equal to true, then the whole thing, you know, that, that would be our sign that that particular value was null. So is null in SQL the is null operator is equivalent to typing all of this out in um, Visual Basic. Now, this is not equivalent to asking if some value is equal to null in Visual Basic because um, it's a little bit weird in Visual Basic the way it works. Uh, if you say um, some variable equals null, you're trying to do a Boolean comparison of something equals null. But the way that null works in Visual Basic, that whole um, statement, value equals null, actually is itself a um, false statement. Whether or not the value actually is null or not, um, you get this like false statement. Uh, or, you know, it, it becomes false if you're using it as like a, uh, trying to use it as a Boolean condition. So it it gets weird. Just the fact that you're trying to use null in a uh, comparison operation or this like logical operation right here, um, it would just convert it to false. Any any statement that you try to use it and gets converted to false and you can't really work with it. So when you're working with databases in Visual Basic, you have to use this dot is field name null uh, property that gets created for you when you're actually um, you know, working with the uh, table in your application. So is year null, is actress null, is uh, grade null, is name null, anything like that. That's the kind of stuff you would have to do to get the equivalent of the SQL. The SQL um, is null. However, um, they're kind of performing different things 
anyway, performing different duties anyway. So you might not even be using this visual basic thing. That's not even an operator, it's just a whole statement. You might not be even using this in the same way that you would use the is null operator in SQL. Because the is null operator in SQL is being used as an operator in the where clause to uh, filter out records. All right, so here's an example of using the where clause. Um, if we wanted to get all of the uh, Oscar winners data, so all of the fields, but we wanted to get it, uh, you know, 2016 and later. We don't care about the winners of all these awards in 2015 or 2014 or earlier. We only care about 2016 on. We could say um, select all of these fields from winners where year is greater than or equal to 2016. So we take the year field and we check greater than or equal to 2016. What this is saying right here, this where clause is saying for every record that we're trying to take into consideration, we're trying to decide if we're going to include it or not. So we're iterating through every record in the table, checking to see if we want to include it in our query or not. Well, the where clause determines if we want to include each individual record in and for each record that we are iterating over we check if that records year uh, field is greater than or equal to 2016 if that is true if records year is greater than or equal to 2016 then we include it in our query else we do not include it in the query so that's what sql is doing it goes through every single year or sorry every single record in the database it checks that records year field checks if that value is greater than or equal to 2016 includes it if year greater than or equal to 2016 is true does not include it otherwise uh, we have another example right here select year from winners where picture equals argo what i'm asking um s the sql server to give me using this sql command is give me a table that only includes the year record, or sorry, the year field, and give me all records from this winner's table where the picture, you know, the winner of best picture is equal to Argo, exactly equal to the string Argo. So this would still give me a table, but this actually gives me a table of only one record because Argo only one picture best picture in one year which is 2013 and it only gives me one field from that record which is just the year field so we have a table but with only one row and one column and that one row and column being the year 2013. So essentially it gives us the year that Argo won best picture but it gives us as a one by one table which is interesting but if we wanted to get you know that hyper specific uh, data then we could do something like this where we're only asking for the year and we're um, essentially using this query right here uh, within where to get that year where Argo won best picture. So these are really powerful. You can actually do a lot with this select statement. You can, it, it does a lot to give you, um, you know, a lot of control over what data you're getting from a database especially if that database is huge so this is a really really powerful thing all right so i'm going to come back to the like operator to talk a little bit more about how it works in sql specifically as opposed to visual basic um it does work very similar similarly to how it works in visual basic where you have some uh text that you're trying to compare to a pattern so you say text like pattern but um, in this case, with the like operator, we'll be putting a field that will contain text in it, um, sort of like the actor or actress or picture or animated picture uh, fields from the winner's table that we've been talking about. You just put that field name on the left if you know that it has text in it, and then you would say like, and then you put a um, pattern on the right, a pattern of characters. Um, and this whole operator becomes true if the field matches a pattern defined by a pattern string containing wildcards. Uh, very much like how the like operator works in Visual Basic. Although 
I say pattern string right here. It's more like a pattern um, array of characters technically in SQL. Uh, it's a very subtle difference, but they, they, they do act very much the same way in um, SQL as it does in Visual Basic, which is nice. You just don't get those like two upper, two lower, whatever methods that you do in Visual Basic. In uh, SQL, you just have to, uh, you have to um, be very, like you, you don't get those extra methods. You just have to explicitly say what you want in your um, pattern string. The wildcards in SQL are a lot simpler than the wildcards in Visual Basic. You only actually get two wildcards that we're you know, really talking about here. So the first wildcard in SQL is the percent symbol, which matches zero or more characters, and it could be any character whatsoever. Um, it doesn't even have to be the same character every single time. It's just, are there zero or more characters at all? Then that percent symbol matches. Uh, it's equivalent to the asterisk in Visual Basic. Um, and then you have the underscore in SQL matches one or more characters, which there isn't a direct uh, equivalent to in Visual Basic. In Visual Basic, you'd have to put the question mark and then the um, asterisk, one right after, like, you know, right next to each other uh, in your pattern string to specify that you want one of any character and then zero or more of any characters after that, which in total adds up to one or more characters. But yeah, in SQL, this is what we are dealing with. The percent sign matches zero or more characters. The underscore matches one or more characters. All right, so for example, um, suppose we had some table of information and one of the fields uh, in that table was the state that was associated with each record, uh, the state in the United States. And we were trying to, as our where conditional, we were trying to only include the um, states that started with the letters M, I. Uh, so we could say something like, uh, as our conditional state like M, I underscore instead of these single quotes. And by the way, for uh, SQL, you will want to use single, quote, single quotes in here rather than double quotes. It has to do with the, um, the way that they represent it as array of characters, I believe. But you do want to use uh, these single quotes right here. So state like um, the character array mi underscore, like this. The visual basic equivalent would be state like uh, the string containing mi question mark ast uh, asterisk. And both of these in their respective programming languages match all of the states or, you know, any, any text pattern or any text, I should say, that uh, starts with a uppercase m and then is followed by a lowercase i, and then has at least one more character in here uh, following it. But there has to be at least one following it. So it will match uh, Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, and Missouri. Now, in SQL, you can probably assume... Well, okay. When you actually have stuff already in a database, you're probably checking, you know, when you're putting information into a database, you would want to check to make sure that that information going into the database is already good, right? Uh, when it is coming back out of the database, you might be uh, somewhat assured that the information going into the database is you know, the, the information that was that went into the database, that was already checked, uh, any bad values were thrown out, anything like that, so anything in there is already good, so you can expect to only have the names of states inside of your state uh, field like this. So you don't have to worry about, like, uh, Mickey Mouse being in the state field, and then erroneously getting matched, and then given back as part of your query or something like that. You probably don't have to worry about that. 
um, there are ways that you could design your database or design your uh, program that actually takes the data out to account for just in case someone did put that bad information in there. Like you could design the database with a state code, sort of like the country code that we saw last chapter and the relations with the um, location and salesperson database, right? You could have a locations database that has um, state codes, for example. So you could do something like that to make sure that you're getting good values out of the uh, state information by having the user put in that state, like their own state, and then translating that state into a state code uh, and then storing that state code in the database rather than just storing the user's text directly in the database. But you know, that's a little bit of an aside. With the, the SQL state, like when we're using this like thing right here, I think it's the way that we tend to work with databases, you can be a little more assured that you're not going to get bad values. Uh, you might be more assured than you might be with the like operator where you're in Visual Basic where you're working with uh, user input more directly or something like that. Whereas with a database, we can do a lot of things as we're putting data into the database or when we're setting up the database to make sure that we've actually um, done it safely and that we're not going to get these uh, bad values out of our database. So it can be a little more relaxed with that one. All right, so here's an example of actually using the like operator inside of a select statement. Uh, select year and picture from winners where picture like um, and our pattern string is the space percent. So we're essentially getting all of the uh, years of Oscar winners. You know, e year is a primary key here. So the record is defined by the year. So we're getting each year of Oscar winner, um, but we're only getting the year number itself, and also the um, the name of the movie that won Best Picture. And we're only getting the years where the Best Picture started with the word the. And it's a full word, um, because we have the space and then stuff coming after it. Uh, if we didn't put that space there, we might also include any movies that started with words like, say, Theodore. Uh, so because we put the space right here, this is only um, getting movies that start with the word the, that have a space, and then have other things after them. So that's what we're doing. We're filtering out any row, any record that doesn't have a movie starting with the word the, and we're only including records that start with, you know, whose best picture winner starts with the word the. That's what this is doing. Uh, so get those two fields and only include the records where the first word of the best picture uh, winner is the word the. Right, so here are the results uh, that we would end up getting from this uh, if you take a look at the actual Oscars database. Um, now this isn't actually formatted like a table so much. This one, two, three, and four would not actually be part of the table per se. Um, you know, the, 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 the sort of query would give us, the, the, the table that the query would give us would have a year field and a picture field. And this is the data that we would get out of it. But what I'm doing with these numbers right here is actually presenting the order in which we would actually get that data back out. So we would get it actually um, chronologically. You know, it, the year is, it, it's ascending by year. So 2010, 2011, 2012, 2018. And the reason why that is, is because the year is the primary key. So it's not um, alphabetical or anything. It is uh, going off of the year right here, um, which I thought it would be helpful to point that out. But this is the result of using this uh, query right here. This is what you would get out of it. The year field and the picture field um, and the only records you would get and 
uh, the only records you would get are the ones where the picture name starts with the word the and we're filtering out all the other records and it's presented to us in ascending order by year by our primary key of course sometimes we don't want to order our um we don't, we don't want to order our query by our primary key ascending all the time so that's why the order by clause you know that's where that can actually come in handy this is another optional clause but you would say order by and then you would give the name of the field that you want to use to order it by and then there's an optional uh d e s c keyword that stands for descending um but the default behavior if I don't include order by at all, the default behavior would be equivalent to if I typed in order by primary key, so order by year, like we saw in the last example. But when I say order by field name, like this, uh, all records are sorted by their value in the field named field name, and they're sorted in ascending order. So. Uh, with numbers, it would be one, two, three, four, five, in that order, right? You know, previously we saw it being sorted by the values 2010, 2011, 2012, and 2018, right? Uh, for text, it would be alphabetically. So the letter A would come first, and the letter B, then the letter C, and so on and so forth. It does get a little bit tricky with um, uppercase and lowercase letters as well, because uh, the... Oh, it's slipping my mind whether uppercase letters are considered to come before lowercase letters or not. In most programming languages, uh, of course, SQL might be smart about it, but you could also just not worry about that at all and use like two upper or two lower in Visual Basic when you're putting data into your table in the first place. And then you don't even need to worry about that kind of thing. That that can be really helpful. but. Yeah, that's how the order by clause works here. Now there is this descending key, this optional descending key, and if you specify this, it actually orders everything in descending value. So um, the years previously, if I put uh, order by years descending, then the uh, best picture year query that we saw before would have been uh, in the order 2018, 2012, 20. 11, 2010, rather than the way that we saw it before. And with text, it would be reverse alphabetical. So starting at the letter Z and then going to A. All right, so here's an example of using the order by clause. Um, we have select year animated from winners. So we're getting uh, all of the years and the animated best picture or best animated picture wins from the winners table. Uh, we have a cool where clause right here because we actually have uh, this or operator combining these two years. So either the year is 2010 or the year is 2020. Uh, I say either here because since year is a primary key, it will be um, unique. You wouldn't want two primary keys with the same value. So year uh, is always going to be unique. So we're either getting the record from year 2010 or the year 2020, but we're ordering by animated. So we are sorting by the name of the animated best picture for each year. So it's giving the, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, sorting those records by the name of the animated best picture ascending as well. So when we do that, we would get the first record in the table being uh, the year 2020 uh, animated best picture was uh, Toy Story 4 that year. And then in year 2010, the second record uh, animated best picture was up. T comes before U in the alphabet. So this is in ascending order like this. Uh, as opposed to if we didn't include order by at all, we would have 2010 first and then 2020 because that is the default ordering is by primary key. So that is how the order by uh, clause works. Now we can actually look at the descending version of this as well, just by putting the uh, descending keyword next to animated. And this gives us the reverse order where up comes first and then Toy Story 4. So that's how you use that uh, keyword in the order by clause. 
All right, so that is the select statement, and we are going to be um, looking at how our select statements kind of are affected as we're building up our queries that I'll be showing off in the next video. So stay tuned for that.